My name is Daniel Vaswani, and I'm the lead attorney at Virtuoso Criminal and DUI Lawyers. So you've been arrested, and you've been giving usually a notice to appear, which is a citation telling you when a court date's gonna be. If the case is a misdemeanor offense, then usually your attorney can appear on your behalf. If your case is a felony offense, you likely will have to be present. In any event, people are often confused as to what happens at court dates. What you normally see on TV happens very rarely. Those are often trials. Your first court date is often titled the arraignment. At your arraignment, all that is likely to happen is that you're going to be advised of your constitutional rights. You will be advised of the potential pleas available to you. And at that point, usually you will enter a plea of not guilty. That is usually what causes the case to move forward. It is not recommended that you enter a guilty or no contest plea at the arraignment. The reason why is that you want to examine the case to ensure you know what defenses are available. Because often the district attorney's office will provide you with the complaint. The complaint is the document that specifically indicates what you're being charged with. What does not happen at arraignment is you do not address the facts of the case. There's no presentation of evidence. There's no cross examine of witnesses. The officers will not show up and it's unlikely that an offer will be made. That means there will be subsequent court dates. Well, how many subsequent court dates should there potentially be? In some counties, there could be one additional court date. In other counties, there could be many additional court dates. Some counties will say, as a result of that, there is one discussion and then the case will be set for trial. In other counties, there are multiple discussions. Those discussions are called pretrial conferences. The location in which your court is going to be held is tied not always to the courthouse that is closest to you. It's tied to the courthouse in the county in which you were arrested. But in some situations, there's a courthouse closer, but it may be outside of a different county. Usually that court date will be either within a month of the date of the incident in certain counties, two months in the case of certain counties, and three months in the case of other counties. And in certain situations, your case may not go forward on that first court date. And that occurs only because the district attorney's office has not yet filed against you. And in that situation, number one, you could receive a notice to appear in the mail. If that notice to appear comes, you must tell your attorney or appear on that date yourself. Now keep in mind, if you gave the incorrect address at which you currently reside, then you must be very cautious and vigilant to ensure that you update the courts and the district attorney's office of your new address. And the reason why that's relevant is because the new updated notice to appear will be mailed to the address by which that you give them. You really must pay attention to that first court date. The reason why is that at arraignment, the issue of bail can come up. And what that means is if they're addressing bail, is that the court and the district attorney's office are seeking to consider whether or not you should be placed into custody and forced to post a bail bond in order to be released. And in some situations, they may put you in custody and not allow you to post a bail bond, which means you have to remain in custody until the resolution of the case occurs. Usually now what courts are asking is that counsel, meaning your defense attorney and the district attorney's office, meet and confer and discuss the case and address missing items or discovery prior to the next court date. Discovery is two things. It's used to refer to the actual items that are connected to your case, meaning the police report, any supplemental video, any potential toxicology reports and so on. And it's also used to describe the process by which that we exchange that information. Usually at the first court date, the only thing that is going to be discovered to you is the initial police report. It will not include any supplemental video. It will not include sometimes the toxicology reports if it's a case involving a breath or blood sample. It may not include DNA. It may not include you know, all types of other discovery that are applicable to your case. Only thing that comes up at arraignment is the initial discovery, which is the police report. That document will not be provided directly to the person who's been accused of the crime, but it will be provided to your attorney. Now, the question is, who can your attorney be? 
Well, there are two options. The first is the public defender's office. The second is a private attorney. With the public defender's office, you cannot hire that public defender or accept representation by that public defender until the first court date. With a private attorney, you meet them prior to court. That means that they have all the information that they need in order to ensure that you stay out of custody and argue as whether or not you should go into custody or stay out. If you have questions about your case, you can speak to your private attorney independently of the court dates. For us, for example, we provide you with our cell phone numbers directly, and we do that with purpose. We know that questions come up. We know that things are uncertain. We know that in certain situations, it's difficult to satisfy the requirements that are imposed by the court. And sometimes you need extension. Sometimes you need further assistance. Sometimes there are wrinkles that you just cannot get through or understand on your own. If you have any questions about these complicated issues, you obviously need qualified counsel.